because life's too short for ordinary jewelry. Coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football, highlights from high school state championship games, including the 2A title game between Barton and Junction City, plus Little Rock Central against West Memphis and Batesville battling Bologna. We'll take you to Hector to meet this week's Marine Scholar Athlete and over to Mustang Mountain where Central Arkansas Christian's talented quarterback is our Coleman Kid of the Week. All of that plus our annual year-end highlight video showcasing most of the state's team. It's the final show of the season. It's Hooton's Arkansas Football and it's next. You stuck it to him and you won it! This is our time of the year. Hello and welcome to Hooton's Arkansas Football for the final time this season, our 18th show of the year, and in the next 30 minutes, we'll recap the state championship games this afternoon's AA title game, last week's 5A and 4A state championships, and our year-end highlight video extravaganza. More than 150 teams included in our year-end highlight video. That's all coming up in the next half hour, but we will begin with highlights from this afternoon's Class 2A state championship game, and our Class 2 a highlights are brought to you by Sonic. Come on now. Listen, we've got to play tough now. Hey, 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 you got to watch the pass. Uh, all right. they, the Barton not. Bears and legendary coach Frank McClellan were back in Little Rock going for their ninth state championship. Junction City was making its first appearance in the title game after losing in the semifinals the past two years, but the Dragons looked like they belonged here early. Perry Williams takes the handoff 29 yards to score on Junction City's first possession. Five minutes later, the Dragon defense would get in on the Action. Kobe McKinnon returns the interception 15 yards and that put Junction City up 13 to nothing midway through the first quarter. But Barton continued to pass because it sure couldn't run on these Junction boys. This screen pass to Quentin Hudson was good for 17 yards and on the next play, Barton's junior quarterback Chris Vaughn will find Michael Harris for 15 yards and the Bears are driving 62 yards to score. Hudson would go in from one yard out and cut Junction City's lead to 13 to six at the end of the first. But Junction City exploded for 21 unanswered points in the second quarter. Williams and this guy, Brandon Carter, both rushed for more than 100 yards in the first half. After Carter's 49 yard run, Junction would score three plays later as Cousins, Drew, and Kobe McKinnon hook up for a 10 yard touchdown. It was 34 to six at halftime and Junction City rolls to its first state title. Final score, Coach David Carpenter's Junction City Dragons, 40, the Barton Bears, 12. And here's a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 2A rankings. Junction City moves into the top spot, and Barton is number two. Charleston had its best season in school history, finishing 13-1, and, and Ryzen should again be one of the top teams in 2004. There's Boxside at number five. It may be a while before the Miners see a top 10 ranking again. They jump up to Class 3A next fall in the same conference with Pulaski Academy and Central Arkansas Christian. Those teams were together in the old 5A South back in 1987, 89, and 90. Elkin starts the second 10, followed by Palestine Wheatley. The Patriots won their first playoff games in history this year, and most of them were underclassmen. Hughes, Jessible, and the Pea Ridge Blackhawks round out the top 10. All-timers started the season with three open dates and finished the year with two playoff victories. At Cross County, third-year coach Steve Williams has the Thunderbirds back to the playoff form that they exhibited in the 80s. Lafayette County will also be moving up to AAA next fall. At Glen Rose, coach Billy Elmore has taken the Beaver program to new heights. They won a playoff game last month for the first time ever. There's Gurdon at number 15 after opening the season at number nine. Gillette starts the bottom five. Mountainburg made the biggest jump of any team this year. The Dragons started the season at number 52. Hector, Danville, and Mount Ida round out the top 20. Now, the United States Marines present the Scholar Athlete of the Week. His name is Arthur Joe Newell. 
but you can call him AJ for short. I don't know. It's, it's pretty good, I guess. Got some good guys help me out. You know, he just, he's working so hard in the weight room, uh, the sp uh, speed training, everything, just really laying on the line. These guys love him to death. I mean, they, and they, they feel the same way we do, you know, as coaching staff. You know, when any kid that, that will do anything for you and you give the shirt off his back, you know, how can you not like a kid like that? In tip-top shape, his academics is second to none on the team, posting close to a 4.0 average. Congratulations to A.J. Newell, the well-deserving Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. The Hector Wildcats won 10 games this season and the 4AA title. Congratulations to Hector and A.J. Newell, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Highlights from last weekend's championship games, both Class 4A and 5A, and our year-end highlight video. It's all coming up on Hooton's Arkansas football. Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by State Farm. In this year's Class 4A title game, it was two teams from the same conference playing for the championship, Batesville and Bologna. Bates will beat Bologna by seven points in their meeting during the regular season and we're up seven to nothing early in the second quarter. That's when Bologna gets something going. Josh McIntyre around the end for 22 yards and that would set up Justin Shaw. 20 yard touchdown run for Bologna. They go 86 yards in 12 plays and it's tied at seven. Then Bologna's defense would bow up and force Bates will to punt with 32 seconds left before the half, but the punter bobbles the snap, and Bologna's Matt Stewart blocks it. He's gonna recover it and take it 11 yards for a touchdown. Just like that, Bologna was up 14 to seven, but Batesville would get the ball back at its own 47, just 19 seconds to go before halftime, and quarterback Kyle Francis finds Patrick Smith for a 30-yard gain, and that would set up Scott Wycliffe. A 40-yard field goal attempt, and it's just going to get over the crossbar. That cut Bologna's lead to four. It was 14 to 10 at halftime. And Batesville would continue with its momentum in the second half. The Pioneers drove 80 yards in 10 plays midway through the third quarter. Kyle Francis hits Patrick Smith for the four-yard touchdown, and Batesville was back on top 17 to 14. Francis completed 13 of 21 passes for 183 yards and would run for another touchdown. This one would ice it, and Batesville, which had never won a playoff game before, wins its first ever state title. Final score, Pioneers 31, Bologna 20. I mean, it's the greatest feeling that a man could have. I mean, it's, it's outstanding for our whole, you know, our team, definitely our team, and I mean, our whole, just our whole community and all these fans here, I mean, it's just so, it's great. It's just so great. And here is a look at the final Hootons Arkansas football rankings for Class 4A, brought to you by Arkansas Cooper Tire Dealers. Batesville finished the season undefeated. The Pioneers win their first state title, beating Bologna. Both of those teams should be highly ranked headed into next season. Batesville does graduate its Sonic Super Team quarterback, Kyle Francis, but Bologna will return its quarterback, and he's a dandy, Mr. Calger. Behind those two teams from the 4A East, it's the Crossit Eagles. Crossit lost at Bologna in the semifinals, and Robinson was shut out by Batesville 35 to nothing. Harrison's Golden Goblins lost one game this year and that was to Bologna. The second five starts with Stuttgart. Then it's Wynn and Alma. The Airedales have tons of tradition and should also be a favorite next year. Greenwood's number nine. Then it's Whitehall, Sylvan Hills, and Arkadelphia. The Badgers should make a run at the 4A Southwest Conference title next season. Hot Springs Lakeside's 13. Then it's the Devil Dogs and Paragould. Greenbrier could be a playoff contender next year. The Panthers are followed by Hope, West Helena, Marion, and Mount. Over. Now, Coleman Derry presents the Coleman Kid of the Week. Central Arkansas Christian won 12 games this year, the most in school history, with junior quarterback Jesse Gates totaling more than 3,200 yards of offense and scoring 50 touchdowns. Gates completed 62% of his passes for 2,300 yards and rushed for close to another 1,000 yards. Jesse Gates from CAC, he'll be one of the state's top quarterbacks next season, and he's our Coleman Kid of the Week. Central Arkansas Christian, their best season in school history, and 15 starters are back next year on Mustang Mountain, including Jesse Gates, the quarterback and our Coleman Kid of the Week. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football highlights from last Saturday's 5A title game and still ahead, our year-end highlight video featuring most of the teams in Arkansas coming up. In 
this year's Class 5A state championship game undefeated. Little Rock Central jumped out to an early lead on West Memphis. The Blue Devils, the number three team from the 5A East, but in the finals, after Central quarterback Clark Irwin passed to Rudy Patrick, Irwin would sneak it in for the touchdown, and Central led 14 to nothing early in the second quarter. The score would stay that way until the third. That's when West Memphis came out with a vengeance, scoring 11 unanswered points. Fullback Kyle Payne cutting Central's lead to just three points, heading into the fourth quarter. But kicking game miscues tormented the Blue Devils down the stretch, and Central pulled away with Mickey Dean scoring on a short run, and championship game MVP Fred Bledsoe returning this interception 11 yards in the final minutes to give Central its first state title since 1986. Final score, the undefeated Tigers 28. West Memphis, 17. Oh, um, I read the screen perfectly. The screen was right in my hands. And so what our coaches told us to do is just let the ends rush and let us get on the line and we pursue the quarterback and pick the ball off. Yeah, we came out soft in the second half. They made a close game of it. We came together. O-line did a great job. Stuart Franks had a heck of a game. We just got together and we made sure we get the victory. We told the O-line keep our head up. We're number one, keep baby! We're number one, baby! We're number one, baby! Woo! Heading into Saturday night's championship game, Little Rock Central was the only undefeated team in Class 5A. The Tigers 13-0 with that matchup against West Memphis to decide the state title. Conway has never won a state championship and just missed its best chance in a long time. The Wumpus Cats finished the year 11-2 and likely won't be a top five team for the next couple of seasons. Springdale will be, however. Coach Gus Malzahn believes the Bulldogs could be better in 2004. Springdale put the mercy rule on Russellville. However, the Cyclones came back strong in the playoffs, winning at Cabot and taking Conway to overtime. Pine Bluff starts the second five. The Zebras lost to Sheridan, Lake Hamilton, and Little Rock Central this year. Fayetteville started 9-0 and lost its final two games. Then it's Southside, McClellan, and Rogers. Cabot starts the second 10, followed by Lake Hamilton, Jonesboro, and Bentonville. The Tigers beat Fayetteville 33 to nothing. Bryant won six games this year. Then it's Camden, Fairview, Benton, Searcy, Texarkana, and El Dorado to round out the top 20. Our year-end highlight video featuring most of the teams in Arkansas coming up. Now, more of Hooten's Arkansas football brought to you by Big Red Fina. About the number one team in Class 3A, that's Pulaski Academy. I'm the Bruins' official media coach for the Hootons.com kickoff classic this Monday. It's always an honor to play in the Hootons Classic. All the great teams come and play, and it's really a big honor to play in the Hootons Classic. We're all looking forward to it, and we've been preparing for a long time for this. Ever since we found out about an offseason, that's what we've had our minds on. Obviously, it didn't turn out remotely the way we wanted it to. Springdale is an unbelievably good team. I can move to Hollywood, yeah. Get my teeth caps, I know I could. Be a big star on a silver screen. You might only get one play tonight, son. You better play wide open. Just like James Dean, I could be a star. I When the game is over, when the buzzer rings, you're on the ground laying down because you've got nothing left to give. That's what everything you got is. And that's what myself, these coaches, those fans, and your teammates want. Can you give that to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can, can you give it to me? Yes, sir.
If we are a championship team, we're going to play big tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And this is it. This is that game, and it's now it's time to play it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's get out there and play. Yeah. from Batesville. The Prairie Group. The Rockin' Wildcats. The Mad Go Panthers. The River Crest Coast. The Little Joints. The Hector Wildcats. The Star City Bulldogs. The Veggies. The Cyclones. So and you're watching Hootens. 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 I know we have a championship football team. I can see it from the time you guys were in the seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. I guarantee you there's not a sweeter sound in the world. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. You guys are warriors. This will be a great football game. Make it a great memory. You understand? Make it a great We're going to fool folks with the 18 players. We know how to win. We know how to do it. You've been going to Thanksgiving games since you're in seventh grade. You know what it takes. It's what Shiloh's about. And if you want to wake up in the morning and still be a football player, then you've got to come out and you've got to finish.
again for watching Hooton's Arkansas football this season. It's been a great year, and we're already looking ahead to 2004. The teams for the Hootons.com kickoff classic have been selected. They will be the first games of next year, and we'll be talking about that a little bit more. You'll be hearing about that in just a few weeks. Thanks again, though, for watching this season. We hope you have a great Christmas, and we'll see you next fall right here on Hooton's Arkansas football. Do this and come over there. Okay. Go ahead, John. All set. Yeah. Well, we were hoping for some explosive fireworks, and we got it. It was an exciting ball game. It was exciting, man. Uh, I'm dead. They got some. They had some great athletes, you know. Uh, they were covering our receivers real well, and you know, we were just lucky to get out here with the tie. And you got to feel good about the way you guys came back and and, and tied this ball game. I know we would have liked to play some overtime, though. Yeah, I feel good about the way we never quit. You know, I, I wish they do stuff like this in the Sprinto game, some overtime. Uh, but you know. Both teams played so hard, no one really deserved to lose. And hats off to win. They're a classic ball for a classic ball for And it gave you a lot to think about going into next week. What are some of the things you need to work on? We just need to get in better shape. I mean, we thought we were in good shape, but we got pretty winded at the end as well as they did. And, uh, you know, Springdale throw the ball, so maybe I think we can cover that a little better. It won't be quite as fast, but we just got to keep fine-tuning. Uh, you know, I can't make those dumb throws like I did today, and I think we'll be okay. Okay, thanks, man. Good luck to you.